and participants. All right, you can see we have our participants coming in. It's going to be a big night for us. This is going to be our uh, most uh, viewed webinar up to date. So thank you for coming on. Um, we are not going to use the chat function tonight where you're going to use the question and answer uh, um, format. So if you have questions and answers, I mean, answers, we're going to have the answers for you. If you have any questions, please use the question and answer, answer function, and we'll try to answer them that way. If you use the chat function, we most likely will try to direct you to the question answer function. So um, one apology, well, I guess I'm not apologizing to you because you're all here, but we did uh, reach the max capacity of our license for this webinar. That's why some of your friends or people you may have told uh, were not able to access this webinar because we had a license for 500. And that's including uh, 400 for the public. And I saved 100 for our Hunter education instructors who are volunteering some hours by being here tonight. So thank you to you Hunter Ed instructors. Thanks for coming on. I appreciate your interest and continued support. <clears throat> All right. Already up to 200 attendees. I'm gonna give it to about 602. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and start up. So uh, once again, we're gonna use the question answer function. If you have any questions that you want, please post them there and they will be shared uh, by the panel if they're, you know, they're good to be answered. They have, they have options of how to answer them, to answer them personally or to the group. And uh, sometimes those group answers are of, of use to a lot of people. So let's get some good questions out there. Uh, one other thing tonight is not, uh, it is not a webinar on how to hunt wild pigs. It's on where to hunt wild pigs. There will be another webinar at a later date on how to hunt wild pigs. Um, every time we do one of these clinic webinars, it's to try to strike the iron or where it's hot. And one reason why we did the wild pig clinic for a public lands tonight is because this weekend on February 14th, um, there's applications due for department sponsored hunts at uh, Grizzly Island. So I wanted to make you aware of that. So we're gonna talk about those tonight, um, how to apply. Uh, Grizzly Island is located um, in the Carquinas Strait area. The Sassoon Marsh uh, near Fairfield. And uh, they have some wild pig hunts that take place there uh, in March. So if you're interested, we're gonna talk about you getting um, involved with that. All right. So let's go ahead and begin. Um, thank you for coming on. I'm gonna start the recording or it's recording right now. Stop. It's recording already. All right. So I'm going to start with our webinar. Uh, we have 250 plus people coming in. So thank you for coming. Uh, once again, tonight, we're going to talk about wild pig hunting on public lands. And it is not going to talk about basic techniques of wild pigs, pig hunting. So please uh, stand by with that. If you have uh, questions that uh, are pertaining to that later, you can always email me you have my email in your registration information. Uh, reach out to me and I can help you possibly after that. Also, I will be sending out links um, of items that are covered tonight. Um, and I am also going to try to get this webinar uh, recording posted as soon as possible for because there's a lot of people who are really wanting to get in this. I turned away over 100 people to try to get into this webinar. So. Thank you for your interest and we're going to go ahead and get started. So, sure. And laser. Stand by for a second. All right. So everybody should see my 
screen, we're talking about wild pig hunting on public lands. This is one hairy pig. Uh, pigs like this get like this sometimes in the wintertime. In the summertime, you'll see them with a lot less hair. So uh, if you've never seen a pig this hairy, it's, it's usually what a wintertime pig looks like. You also see the, some of the features of a wild pig. Uh, this one is exhibiting a lot of Russian boar type of traits. It has a long, longer snout, has pointed ears. They're not floppy forward, long tail, and really long hair. And usually they're smaller in the rear. They're at more athletic in a sense. This is one of the comments I heard from one of the participants. He said, most of us think public land pigs are about as mythical as a unicorn meaning that the opportunities for wild pigs on public land is almost like spotting, you know, a unicorn or Bigfoot, who knows, right? Um, but when you look at their actual range of a wild pig, there's potential for wild pigs to be up and down our whole state. They cover many regions of our state, except for the desert region or out to the east. But typically they follow along uh, the coastline. They like that oak savanna area. Um, the lower ends of the foothills where there's a lot of oaks, they're not really up in the Sierras where the pine trees and stuff are. So you won't be seeing too many in that area, but a lot of the oak savanna, uh, that's what they're, they're in. So, you know, coming up, we have turkey season and you may see a, a potential for uh, spotting some pigs at that same time. When we look at the different counties, the top six counties for reported pig harvest, which equaled almost 60% of the total, was Tehama, Mendocino, San Benito, Monterey, San Luis Obispo, and Kern counties, with the top three being down here in the central part of our state. Monterey County being number one at 24% uh, of the harvest, almost 25, and San Luis Obispo, uh, followed secondly with 12% and then Kern County. So we're gonna talk about some of these locations tonight about where you have some public land opportunities. Uh, some of these, honestly, I've tried to get some information and the warden force up there said, you know what? There's really not that many opportunities in Tehama County or Mendocino or even Kern for that matter. But the, the, the good thing is the top two counties uh, San Luis Obispo and Monterey County do have opportunities. So we're gonna stress those mostly. Here's the kill um, animal harvest report for the last uh, season of 19 and 20. Um, as you can see, those are the numbers. Uh, hopefully if you can't see them, you'll be able to uh, watch the recording and maybe pause it but I pointed out the top five, I mean, top six, well, actually top five there. Um, with Monterey County harvesting 877 total pigs, of which 65 of them were taken on military lands and 21 on public lands, okay? Um, the other one, San Luis Obispo County, number two, 422 pigs harvested. Uh, 35 on public and six on military. There's a lot of private land pigs taken in these areas and that may be an alternative uh, method for you to harvest a pig if, if public land opportunities don't, don't pan out. So if you look at the public and military land harvest for 19 and 20 season, there were 352 pigs of the 355 uh, 3,555 reported taken, which basically comes out to almost 10% of our pig take was on public and military lands, okay? Um, one public land recommendation when I was seeking it was from uh, a, a warden up there in Mendocino County. And he just gave this quick little thing that his best spot that he's sent people to uh, is in Mendocino National Forest east of Colo on uh, road M1. And there's some different ridge marks there too, but he said a very important part about this is there's some private property mixed in with the public. So an Onyx app, if you're not familiar with that, that's an application you can get on your phone that tells you where you are and, and uh, reference to your location being public or private. Um, that's a very good app to keep you out of trouble. 
If you have that app on your phone or on a GPS, it can avoid uh, some confusions on where your location is. So always look for posted areas, make sure that you're not passing them. But that's what he said for Mendocino County. Uh, he's killed pigs up there before and he's seen people with pigs. Another uh, public land opportunity, and somebody asked this question um, via an email to me, is the Lake Sonoma hunt. There's a, uh, there's a link that I will include in your um, links page that I'll send after our, our webinar, uh, talking about how to apply for this, what the rules are. Uh, it sounds like a pretty good thing, but it, it sounds like you also need a, a boat for best access. So this link will be in your um, links page after the webinar. Uh, just really quick, you can see there too, those are summertime pigs. You can see they're a lot less hairy. Uh, they, they tend to shed you know, some of that heavy hair. Uh, this is this one that I'm talking about, or what I'm gonna explain to you here is how to apply for the Grizzly Island um, pig hunts that are available. Uh, the deadline for this is gonna be on Sunday at four o'clock. So between now and Sunday, make sure you apply for some of these if you're interested. They are in Grizzly Island. It's a free application. There's no cost to it. So let's go through it. So on our homepage, you're gonna tick the, click the um, hunting tab and choose hunting, more hunting info. You'll come to the apprentice hunts application. Okay, click on that. Here you'll be able to look at the select, uh, select and apply for hunts. Um, this is where you'll see your options for uh, the pig hunts. Um, it'll give you in this category, the hunt category that has apprentice hunts or it has all other hunts. The apprentice hunts are meant for junior hunters. Um, they have a limit of two uh, junior hunters per party. And I believe they have, uh, well, I think it's on my next slide. Um, yeah. Hunts party size is two hunters and they will accommodate a max of four hunters. So if you're interested for a junior, it is a shotgun or archery only hunt. It's not rifle center fire. So you have to use shotgun slugs using copper ammunition or non-lead ammunition and uh, or archery equipment, okay? And this hunt will take place on March 6th and 7th. It's a two day hunt. For the adults or even other juniors, uh, they have eight more hunts that, or seven more hunts uh, for the consecutive weekends after that, from March 13th all the way through April 25th. Uh, each weekend, they're going to accommodate four hunters um, with a max party size of two hunters. So once again, shotgun only and archery equipment. And then the other thing that we have is the shared uh, program. At this time, there isn't any registrations open for the shared program, um, but there are some hunts that are still um, due to happen. But the deadline for registration has expired. But please keep an eye on the share, share site. If there are some pig um, hunts available, they're usually uh, advertised through, a, you know, maybe our hunter update or some other means, but uh, check it periodically. All right, really quick, I wanna ask a poll of you all. Thank you for participating. And I'm gonna launch it right now. And this is questions just for our own purposes to, to see where all our people are coming from. Um, have you ever, have you attended an advanced hunter education clinic or webinar before? Yes or no? I appreciate all the participation. I'm gonna close it in two, three, one. All right, I'm gonna share my results with you. So about 180 of you um, said, no, you haven't, and 98 uh, have. So thank you for all those ones who haven't come to us before. Uh, we hope to give you what you're, what you're seeking tonight. And one other question I wanna ask you now before I get off to another um, panelist. 
All right. Have you ever hunted for wild pig before? Yes, successfully. Yes, unsuccessfully. And no. You guys are all quick answering. I appreciate that. Good responses. All right, I'm gonna end it in three, two, one. Share my results. So we have some successful pig hunters here. 37% of you said that you have hunted pigs successfully. 28% um, says yes, so you've hunted them, but unsuccessfully. And 35% have not hunted wild pigs. All right. So that ends my program. What I wanna do now is introduce uh, Lieutenant Matt, Matthew Gill. Matt is out of, um, excuse me. Yeah, there. Are you there, Matt? Yeah, out of Monterey and San Luis Obispo counties. Got you. So I'm sorry. Uh, yes, Matt is out of, uh, Lieutenant out of Monterey and San Luis Obispo counties. He's very familiar with the area. He's been patrolling there for how many years, Matt? Uh, I've been over 11 years so far now. All right, so he's got a lot of experience with that. 11 years can get you a lot of groundwork. So. Seven years patrolling, I grew up in the area, so we'll see okay. what we can do. All right, so he's gonna go over your Central Coast uh, opportunities. He's gonna present most of the material tonight. Uh, please, like, once again, ask any questions to the question answer function, and uh, thank you for coming on. It's all yours. All right, let's see here. All right, hopefully everybody can see this. My name is Matt Gill. I'm the patrol lieutenant for San Luis Obispo and South Monterey counties. Um, we're gonna kind of go over some public land that you guys can hunt at in Central California. And there's a reason we're gonna focus on Central California and you saw that's where mainly where the pigs are, but kind of give you a little information here. Uh, my background info, I was the King, War King City Warden since 2010, prior to becoming a lieutenant. Um, I currently reside in the heart of wild pig country in South Monterey County. I teach at these annual advanced hunter ed clinics, uh, especially, specifically the wild pig clinics. Um, you can see that picture was taken earlier this week at my house. The chickens are enjoying the fresh pig rooting that I had there taken overnight. Um, they've been coming in almost every night. Uh, Matt, Matt you're, you're not sharing your screen. I'm sharing it. Hold on here. I hit share. How about now? there yes okay so we'll go back over here to the beginning so a little bit about me and my background uh, as king city warden since 2010 um, prior to becoming a lieutenant uh, you can see that's my house right there in my yard the chickens are eating all the fresh grubs and stuff that the pigs came and rooted up they've been coming in every night um, see pigs pretty much every few days if not every day of this time of year right now um, so we're going to kind of go into some more information here. Why Monterey and surrounding counties? So before we get into the public areas, I want to give everybody a brief history of why. Why are we in Monterey County? Why are we talking about these areas? Why does Monterey County and the surrounding areas such like San Luis Obispo County, San Benito County, why is there such a dense pig population and harvest rate? Um, we'll go back to the 1920s, a little history lesson. Uh, the exact date is unknown, but in the 1920s, uh, European boars or these Russian boars that people like to call them were brought into Monterey County. This is the first area in California to have introduced these Russian boars. Um, prior to that, we had uh, settlers who only had brought over like domesticated pigs, your livestock type pigs that had gotten out and were a little feral, but not these Russian boars that were brought in to become these hunted possession, these prized hunting um, opportunities. Uh, so and that's in the 20s and the 50s. Shortly thereafter, they were found in San Luis Obispo County, which is 100 miles south. Um, the history is still murky if the Hearst Ranch actually brought any of those in or if they you know, migrated there. But either way, they had started making their way and they were found in a county 100 miles away. Um, since then, Monterey County has been a consistent population source for wild pigs. Um, every year, there's wild pigs that are coming out of Monterey County on both private and public lands. So they're not going to be going away anytime soon. They're gonna be there for years to come. Uh, so private and public hunting opportunities, uh, those equal high harvest rates. Uh, Monterey, San Luis Obispo counties, they have a lot of public land and a lot of private land. You think of Monterey County and 
a lot of people think of Fisherman's Wharf, Pebble Beach, uh, Big Sur Coast. Well, Monterey County is actually uh, the lettuce, the salad bowl or lettuce uh, capital of the United States. And it has a lot of rural ranches and big ranches in it. Same with San Luis Obispo County and a lot of public land. So when you have all that wildlife area for and habitat for pigs, you're gonna have high harvest rates and high success rates. Um, you can see right there on the left, uh, the picture I have, those are pigs where the blue arrow is pointing to um, on private land that was farmed. So kind of go over uh, some pros and cons or different ideas from private lands to public lands. Private lands, you're gonna have a higher success rate. Uh, the guides are out there every day. They know where their pigs are. That's their job. So they have to have that higher success rate. Public lands, your success rate's gonna be lower, um, especially initially, most likely. That's not saying it's gonna be nothing, but it's gonna have a lower success because you are hunting an area where everybody else can go hunt. Um, Private lands are a one to two day hunt usually. You can uh, sometimes tag out one day, sometimes two days, depends how it works out. The public lands, you're gonna go out at multiple times. There's no cap on how many times you can necessarily go out. Usually it's gonna take you multiple hunts before you're successful. Uh, if you go down on the guides list here, you have a one-time monetary cost. So that could be anywhere from $800 to $1,500 for one pig. Uh, depending on that pig, there could be trophy fees involved. A lot of times, once you get to an inch or more on tusks, uh, depending on the guide, they can start going up in fees quite a bit. Um, if you look at that pig on the right-hand side, you can see those tusks. That is considered a trophy pig for sure. That trophy pig was taken on public land. So those people that say there's no public land trophy pigs, there's evidence right there in picture of it. Um, if you go on a public land, the lower cost is initial, look, initial cost is lower. You're not paying that initial $800 to $1,000 for a pig. You're gonna be out there. You might, if you know, you can rough it in some free public camping areas. Uh, you're just gonna be out your food and your time. So something to think about your lower initial cost. You might have to go out there a few more times, but it typically is lower in that regards. Um, and that's your most expensive cost is probably gonna be your fuel. Uh, private lands and guides, you have less field time. Your field time is uh, going to be one to two days. The guides are there to get you in, um, have you a, a successful hunt and get you out so they can get their next hunters in. Uh, they're going to impart some knowledge to you possibly. You might learn a little bit, but on your public lands, you're going to have way more field time. You're going to learn a lot more about how to hunt these pigs and you're going to gain a lot more knowledge in that regards. Uh, something that's always asked in these clinics that we put on, why do private property owners typically only allow guides? It's kind of a two-pronged answer here. So one is the liability. Uh, a lot of private landowners are worried about getting sued by having you know, a lot of people they don't know out there hunting with firearms on their property, which is understandable. Um, also, it's a source of revenue. So you can see there on the left, that farmer, that rancher has planted that field and they're gonna lose money because of those pigs. Well, they've learned over the years that these guides will come out and hunt those pigs for them and they'll charge $200 per pig that comes off their property. So if a guide goes out there and takes a couple pigs, there's 400 bucks and the farmers had to do nothing but just plant for usually their cattle or something like that. So it's a kind of a two prong, it's a liability and it's a source of revenue for these ranchers. Um, that's why they typically don't allow a lot of public hunting or people just going up and asking to go out there and, hey, can I hunt your property? Not saying it doesn't happen from time to time, but that's typically the reasons why they don't allow it. So just kind of give you a little background on it. So where is this public land that has wild pigs? I'm gonna tell you today, we're gonna to go over a bunch of different areas. Um, I'm gonna tell you areas that have pigs. I'm gonna tell you areas that don't have pigs. I'm gonna tell you where to put your effort and time at and where not to put your effort and time at. The areas we're gonna focus on right now in Monterey County, we will get to some other counties later, is Los Padres National Forest, Fort Hunter Liggett Military Installation, and BLM Land, Bureau of Land Management. So those are some of the main areas in Monterey County that has wild pigs for public access from public opportunity. All right, so we're gonna start with Monterey County from the north and Los Padres National Forest, and right where these pigs were originally brought into in 1920s was the Carmel Valley area. They still have a high amount of pigs in Carmel Valley. Uh, specifically, we're gonna start at the Choose Ridge area at the White Oaks and China Camp campgrounds. These areas are both very steep, rough terrain, lots of manzanita and oak woodlands. 
Um, they're tough areas to hunt, but they do have successful wild pig hunters. At China Camp, you can camp there and you can start hunting right out of the campground once you get out of there. Um, and you can just dive off the side and find some trails and there will be pigs. You'll find rooting. I've seen pigs up there in the actual campground before uh, on public, public time, public land. This is not something I would suggest in the summer months. It's very hot up there. It gets very uh, dry. These pigs during the summer months aren't typically gonna be moving up into that area because there's not a good water source. They'll be moving down into the valleys a little bit more into some creeks where there's some water sources. But during this time, usually when there's some rain or some mist or it's a foggy day, they'll move up into these campground areas to try to get the acorns that have all fallen. Um, this is typically the time of year that they're trying to do that and they're a lot more nomadic than when they're tied off to a water source. So definitely some areas to consider up there would be White Oaks and China Camp campgrounds. I would, I would venture to say more on the China Camp campground as it seems to be a little better at holding pigs, a little, little air, better area for uh, their habitat. You can go down south a little bit off of Carmel Valley Road and you go to Piney Creek. Piney Creek is a smaller area. It's a one road that dead ends. It has a seasonal creek with pig activity from time to time. The winter and springtime is typically a hiking only area and that's due to the rains, usually the rain and the water that we get ends up causing the road to wash out and it needs to be cleaned up. Uh, to make it back to that creek area for pig activity is a long hike, but on that hike from the main road of Carmel Valley up to it, there are pigs that'll root and uh, go through and be nomadic in those oak woodlands because it's pretty much just a bunch of oak trees that you're hiking up the side of a hill on and there will be pigs in there from time to time. They eat the acorns, they're rooting up grubs and worms and everything else that they can find. So that's a, not a bad area to also check out if you're gonna be up in the area of China Camp uh, or Choose Ridge, Piney Creek on the way out would definitely be something I would look at. If it's open, definitely drive in there. If it's not, at least maybe make a little trek, a short little hike, um, might be worth your time. And then we'll go a little further south to Arroyo Seco. Arroyo Seco is gonna have minimal pig activity. It's typically used by day users and campers. You've got to hike pretty far out of there. It doesn't, not an area that's very conducive to pigs or pig hunting. I would not recommend that area to go out. If you wanted to maybe camp there because they have some very nice campgrounds, they do charge, um, that's a possibility. But to actually hunt out of there, it's not conducive for pigs. So that would be one I would probably pass on. And this is another area where you might drive through and see pigs on the side of the road because it is Carmel Valley. That's one of the high population areas of pigs, high density areas. So I'll preface this by saying, make sure you get Onyx hunt maps. Up in this area, the forest service areas and boundaries are marked pretty well, but just make sure you have some type of map system just to double check if you do see a pig on the side of the road. Uh, most of it's all pro private property at that point until you actually get to a dirt road. Hey, uh, Matt, really quick. Yes. Somebody had a question. Can you glass the Piney Creek area without having to hike all the way in? Yeah, so there's actually at the entry to Piney Creek is at the bottom of the hill. You would have to walk up uh, probably at least a mile, maybe a little more to get to the top of the hill. But once you're up there, you can glass it and you can glass pretty far and you can see some good areas. Um, there's definitely some points and lookouts you can get to, to glass down. When you're on top of that hill and you're looking over it towards the creek, there's actually some uh, kind of like some flat areas where the pigs will root up. They're both like wild oats are out there and things of that nature. So you could definitely uh, scout it and just kind of sit there and look to see if you see any pigs. If you see those pigs there, I would say you're going to have to get a uh, move on at either making a long distance shot or you're going to have to really move because they're not going to stay there for very long. They're going to go back into the brush and everything. So if they're out in the open, you're going to have a chance, but you're going to have to get up there pretty quick. And the other question is, how long is a long hike? I mean, how, how many miles? <laughs> That's are... different to everybody. Um, so at China Camp, these pigs, like I said, could be right in the campground. I've seen them there before. Or you could be hiking several miles. Um, when we get to some of these other areas, I'll tell you, you're going to be hiking miles. It's not going to be like, hey, we're going to be hiking half mile and run into pigs. Public land, the further you get off, just with any hunting in general, the further you get off the road, the more success you're going to have, more opportunity, the more likelihood you're going to find something. Uh, a lot of these hikes, you're going to want to be smart about these hikes. Google Earth is a great resource to use where you can have, hey, uh, there's a creek here. Let's follow that creek. There's a water source here. There's, it's green right here during the summertime because you can go back and look at Google Earth 
during the summer and the winter time and figure out where there's water sources holding up. Plan your hikes smart and according to what the habitat you're looking for. Don't just go out on a random hike up the side of a hill because that's not going to probably do you any good. Um, right now, these pigs being nomadic, you don't necessarily need to be tied to that water source. You're going to want to be more tied to the oak woodlands, something where there's going to be acorns maybe that have fallen that people haven't gotten to. Um, but I would say just a normal hike, plan on hiking at least three quarters to a mile on some of these hikes. And some of them will be easy. Some of them are going to be really hard. You're going to be breaking brush on a couple of them to get to some game trails. And we'll go over that. Thank you. Uh, so we're going to move a little further south to South Monterey County, Los Padres National Forest. A memorial campground area, also known as the Indians. Unfortunately, it's currently closed due to the Dolan fire we had last year, but it will open eventually. Um, this will have pig activity in the winter. Almost every year annually, there is pigs once the first rain hits to early, early spring, there will be pigs. The pigs start moving out there. Um, in the spring to summer months, it gets very human impact. A lot of people go out there to camp. The food resources and water sources aren't necessarily there all the time. Um, there is a pond back there. You have to be cautious when you're at the pond because it is fenced off because there's a house back there, an uh, adobe house. That's not typically where the pigs are at. The pigs are gonna be out in this area under the oak trees. This area at the Indians is very flat. It's easy to walk, it's easy to hike. It's got about 10 roads that you can drive along through it. It's got some water sources from cattle that are run out there. But the pigs are only there about this time of year. Usually the first rainfall, and then from there on out until it gets to about the springtime when people start moving out there. These pigs come off of the nearby Hunter Liggett and the other uh, national forest areas. But there are pigs you'll see rooting. I would have to say on road 10 is typically where you see rooting every year. So something you might want to jot down for some of those people. And I'm going to tell you right now, people are going to be mad because I'm going to give up some secrets here that people probably don't want to know about. <laughs> they don't want me to give up. Unfortunately, everybody's got to be entitled to get that opportunity. Um, that's my opinion. So we're also going to go with... Uh, Nosmeno Ferguson Road here. It's also closed, unfortunately, due to the Dolan fire. But the Ponderosa Campground and below, it's not as flat as the Indians. The Indians, is, you can drive for several miles and it's just flat. And you can see for a long ways, you can glass very easily. Um, Nosmeno Ferguson, it's a lot more steep country, a lot rougher country. It's got uh, thick woodlands on either side, lots of manzanita. It's going to have pigs that come off the military base nearby. So the no resident herd pigs are out there off the Nosmeno Ferguson Road. Um, they're just coming off the base, checking stuff out, getting some new food, vegetation in that area, and then they're heading back to the base. So it's something to check about, check out if you're there. Um, people have had success, more people, and you can have success there year round possibly because there's a creek that flows through there. Um, but the you know it's not going to be something that you're going to want to go out there and just try to hunt for a whole weekend. It's not going to work for you. You might check it out for a day, see if there's any fresh rooting, fresh sign, and then go back if there's not. And same thing with the Indians. You'll know when you're out there, if there's fresh rooting, if there's fresh sign, then it's gonna be worth your time to sit out there. If there's no fresh sign or fresh rooting, then either there hasn't been enough rain yet, or there's been too much uh, human impact, human activity. I'm guessing right now with it being closed out there and no human impact, um, there's gonna be pigs out there. So if it opens up, um, sometime soon, just check the National Forest website, um, which we have a link there at the end that will show. Uh, that's where you're gonna wanna check to see if it's open on the Monterey District. But that would be a good one to go if it opens up here eventually, relatively soon before the heat starts kicking in. Um, but a lot of these pigs all come from a base called Fort Hunter Liggett. Uh, if you're not familiar about it, we're gonna go about, we're gonna go into it. This is probably one of the most uh, asked about questions I get all the time, where can I hunt wild pigs and have an opportunity. If I had to tell you one place, it's gonna be Fort Hunter Liggett. Uh, if you looked at the stats that, came, that Sean showed earlier, um, there was some military tags that were shown on there, some military uh, pig successes at this base, because this is the only one in Monterey County that's gonna have the pig hunting. I think those numbers are a little low. Uh, you gotta think about pigs, there's no fine yet if you don't report your pig tag, so some people don't report it. Um, by law like you're supposed to. If that were to change, I think that you'd see a higher success rate also and more people showing that, hey, we got pigs here. 
Um, but 400 Liggett would be my hands down go to if you wanted to try to get a uh, wild pig or if you wanted to have an opportunity just to see wild pig and like, hey, there are signs here. I know they're here and have a chance. A um, little background about Hunter Liggett. It's a 165,000 acre military base, typically used for training by reserves, but some active duty. 165,000 acres is a large area and that is most of open to the public. A lot of that's open to the public to hunt. Um, you, it's regulated hunting mill. So by public hunting, it's regulated. You have to pay for a permit, you have to register your firearms and you have to be vetted for access. So there are some strings that come attached to it. Uh, so a lot of these strings, well, sometimes people will just like walk away and they're like, nope, I don't wanna deal with it. Well, if you don't wanna deal with that little bit of um, steps you have to go through, you're missing out on a great opportunity to go out here and hunt. It's open for everything to hunt, including deer, um, dove, quail, pigeons, whatever you want. But pig is probably one of their biggest uh, draws there at Hunter Liggett. Uh, the installation is divided up into approximately 31 different areas. Each of those areas um, are comprised of thousands of acres. So you might have an area that's only 3,000 acres to an area that's 10 to 20,000 acres. And what Hunter Liggett does is they only allow so many people into a training area. So it's not like you're gonna have, oh, I'm gonna go into this area that's only got a thousand acres and have a hundred people in there. No, you may only have 20 people in there with you. And the 20,000 acre area may only have 40 people in there with you. So they limit the area, the amount of people that are going to these areas for safety and just to make sure it's easier for people aren't stepping on each other. Uh, there's a decent success rate for wild pig harvest. I say you have a very high probability of seeing sign year round is this isn't, there's water sources, they put guzzlers out there, there's feed, there's all types of stuff. Uh, most hunters who put in um, time in the field eventually have success. And I've highlighted in the field. I can't tell you how many people I contact out there that are in the campground. There's a campground on Liggett that you can camp at. It's like 10 bucks to stay there, but they sit there in the campground the entire time. They're never out in the field and they're asking people. The people that go out in the field typically eventually have success. Um, there's a family that comes out of Bakersfield all the time. I remember their first years out there and they had a hard time. They started asking people, they started uh, scouting the areas out. Like, okay, we're learning the things of these pigs. It's time to hear what area they're in, where they're coming from. And now they can get easily three to five a year is what they pull off in that one single program. And they are very good. They put the time in the field and they know where to look time in the field and just learn about pigs and learn about where they're coming from. I almost guarantee you, you're going to find the sign and you're going to have success eventually. Um, it's a very good area to go once you start learning the area and you're willing to put in that effort. Um, it does have some designated walk-in only areas and bicycle areas as well as drive-on areas. So if you're someone that likes to walk and likes to bike, there's some great areas. Training area 29 is a great area for pigs. A lot of people don't go in there because they don't like the hike. Um, there's some areas that are drive-on areas where you can drive in and then just scout from hilltop to hilltop. So that is a possibility. I would say even driving, you're probably going to see pig rooting on the side of the road, but you're probably not going to see the pigs. You're going to have to get off the road a little bit and put in some hiking. Liggett has a lot of trails, a lot of uh, rolling hills and the, good, and the better pig areas. So it's not as hard of a hike to do in some of these areas, um, but definitely something to consider is the hunting areas here can be limited to different types of methods of take. So archery only, shotgun only, muzzleloader or general weapons, depending on the area. So if you're an archery hunter and that's what you like to do and you wanna go get a pig, there's some great archery only areas for pigs. And then depending on the training they have taking place, they limit the live fire um, that they do. So if there's live fire or training, they may shut down some areas or if there's troops training in an area, They'll make it towards a shotgun or a muzzle loader only area and that's just so that um, rounds don't travel as far and they don't endanger any of the troops that are training there but there's some areas that are year-round shotgun only or muzzle loader only that have great success for pigs one because it's harder to shoot those pigs and two not as many people have that slug gun to go out there i would definitely say if you're going to go out to lick it you're going to want to invest in a muzzle loader or make sure you got a, a shotgun that can shoot slugs and you uh, practice on it because those are some things that you're definitely going to want to have out there because they have different areas that are open for just those restricted we weapons. Uh, it has specific 
uh, installation rules and regulations in addition to the fish and game laws. So we require that you have your hunting license and tag. They require that you have their permit and that you know what their laws are if they have some spe specific laws. And then they also, one of their specific laws is you can't have ammo attached to a firearm while you're driving. Um, so that's not necessarily a fishing game law, but that's specific to them. So make sure you know their specific rules and regulations. There's not many of them, but just something to know about. We, all the fishing game laws that we have in California are enforced there and their laws. Um, one of the great things about Hunter Liggett is they have hunting opportunities almost year round on a weekly basis. There's very little, um, time that they're shut down where they don't have it. Usually in maybe in the months of June and July, they may be shut down, which is usually hottest anyways for training. But for the most part on a weekly basis, you can go out there and have tens of thousands of acres to go hunt. And there's usually gonna be pigs or some type of game out there, usually pigs. And Liggett is pretty smart and pretty savvy. They know this time of year, pig hunters are gonna be out there. Let's open up some of these areas that pigs are in. If they know there's gonna be a closing weekend for deer, they're gonna open those areas up. So they're pretty pro hunting for the most part. I mean, training is always first, but they're pretty good at making sure that they know what's coming up and they know they have their own environmental division uh, to manage these animals and make sure that they have a good hunting success rate. Hey Matt, real quick question really quick. Um, are horses allowed on the base? No, so horses, ATVs, side-by-sides are not allowed on the base. The only thing you can have is a street legal vehicle or you can have bicycles. So those about, are the only things that you can have. How about crossbows when, when it's mentioned? Yes, crossbows are legal. You can use crossbows out there. They do not fall under archery though. They follow our regulation as crossbow is not an archery, so it would fall under a restricted weapons area. So okay. that's how that would work out there. And people always bring up this one, e-bikes, those are not considered bicycles, right? E-bikes, e uh, I believe out there would be okay because it's just bicycles. As long as they're a small two, uh, one person, two tire bicycle, that's not giving out any emissions, they would likely be okay out there. I would double check with Liggett on that one to confirm. Essentially when they have bicycle only areas, it's because they don't want vehicles in there. They don't want, um, they don't have a lot of trails necessarily. So they don't want row a big vehicle in there or anything like that. That's usually what they're trying to keep out. So any type of bicycle, e-bike might be okay. People at Liggett have gotten so creative. They actually have trailers that go on their bicycles so they can get their pigs out of there. That's how successful and how dedicated these hunters are out there is they know that they're going to get pigs. So they're going to make, they've made trailers that attach to the back of their bicycle so they can get these pigs out. They might bike in two, three, four miles on these roads, get to an area, shoot a pig, and then have to take it all the way out. And they've got trailers for it. It's pretty unique. And it tells you how good the pig hunting is at Liggett for that. Um, on the right, you can see is a pig that was taken at Hunter Liggett. Um, it weighed, I believe, unfilled dress was like close to 250 pounds. So it was a good eating um, pig. It wasn't bad at all. I think one of the uh, troops ended up using it for a barbecue out there or something like that. But that was a pig that was shot out there at Liggett in a public hunting area, open to the public. Um, so that was a good one. I'm going to go ahead. One more, one more thing. Any uh, special things with the COVID uh, in regards to Fort Hunter Liggett being closed? or? Yeah, so we'll get into that here on this next slide. So I'm going to take us live, it works here, to the Hunter Liggett website and this is their website uh, through iSportsman. Um, this is how we go through and everybody's got to register at Liggett. This is how they run their hunt program. My opinion is probably one of the best for the military side. It has everything you need in here. Um, so if you wanted to come in here at Liggett and you wanted to learn more on how to go through it, I'm not going to, I could do a whole webinar on just how to register at Liggett and how to hunt certain areas at Liggett, but we're not going to get into that. We have a beginner's guide. They have steps to obtain a permit, check in, check out for harvesting. So this is how we also know how many pigs are coming out at Liggett too. They have their own check in and check out and harvest reporting. A um, couple of things that have changed this year at Hunter Liggett is they're charging an, a, a guest pass of $5 if you're under 18. And part of that is we want to make sure or they want to make sure they know who's out on their base. Um, that's why you have a check in and check out. It's all done through your phone with internet. So if you don't like an area you're in, you're not seeing sign, 
you could check into another training area that's open, but you have to make sure that you're registered and everything like that. And the guests also now have to pay five dollars for theirs. If you're if you're juvenile under eighteen, you, you're a member of the hunting party. You just fall under them, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, they have with COVID done a couple things, and we'll get down here. And what they did with COVID is they sh they limited how many hunters are in the areas now. So access is restricted now to four hunters per square mile. So four hunters per square mile. So if an area is you know. 10 square miles, you're getting eight hunters in there, or you know, maybe 10 hunters in there. That's not a lot of hunters to have to deal with if there's pigs. If you get on the pigs, most likely you're not gonna have anybody there with you. Um, but with COVID-19, they've still been open for hunting. I mean, they haven't shut it down. Originally, when we first came out, they were worried about it. Then they said, well, why are we worried about people hunting out in the outdoors? That sounds like a great idea. Like they can still be out there and social distance themselves. So they're still open. Uh, COVID-19 hasn't shut them down. Uh, there is a campground I talked about a little bit. It's ten dollars per night for the primitive camping. Fifteen, I think, if you have electric or water, uh, you can pay it there. It's a pretty basic uh, campground. If you're successful with a pig, a lot of times they have a uh, skinning facility. On that one I showed you, where that pig is hanging. That's their skinning facility. Um, that pig that had the big tusk at the beginning, that was at their skinning facility. So they have a place where you can hang your pigs and try to skin them out. Uh, go in here to permit info your permit fees okay how much does it cost to hunt a hunter legit so you're already in this you know 50 bucks for a hunting license 20 some bucks for a tag it's 125 bucks if you want to do annual hunting at legit and annual hunting includes pigs deer whatever you want to hunt that's open at that time they have a two-day hunting license here or hunting permit and so i would not technically recommend that a lot of people have tried that before and said, yeah, I'm going to pay the 75 bucks, come up here and check it out and try it. Typically, those people want to come back because they've seen sign and they're like, yeah, and they don't credit you that 75 bucks towards your 125. So then you got to pay another 125. Um, you can see that there's some discounted rates for juniors, discounted rates for disabled vets. If you're a recovering service member, if you're enlisted, they have some discounted prices for you. It's a pretty good deal all the way around, um, in my opinion because just of what you get to hunt out there and the opportunity that you have, there's a good opportunity out here. And they do expire every year. You have to do this every year, like a regular uh, fishing game, uh, hunting license. So something to remember there. Maps, everybody asked about maps. So we're gonna go with maps here. So this map was updated today, actually at 2.30. Usually on Thursdays, they put out, this is the only drawback is you don't know what's gonna be open unless it's Thursday usually. Sometimes it'll be a little better, but usually every Thursday is what they put out there. So you can see right now, a lot of the base here in red is closed, but you still have you know, at least 10 areas that are open. This whole section of the base in green is general weapons. I know two of those areas hold pigs pretty decently year round, and I can guarantee you I could go out there in most of those areas and find fresh rooting right now. Um, and that's probably just at those areas you're looking at 30, 40,000 acres, maybe right in here between these areas. Uh, training area 29 is the one I hit on earlier. And this is a little secret again, people are gonna get mad at me for. So you see the straight line, that's county property. That's the county park. You cannot go into the county park. You cannot hunt in the county park. But the county park is a lake right here. Lake San Antonio push when it fills or the river goes up because there's a river that flows right in here, pushes these pigs back into 29. In the summertime, this is private property on either side of 29. There's vineyards and barley fields on both sides. These pigs will go miles and miles and they'll come right through 29. But you've got to get back up here early in the morning or late at night, not late at night, but late in the evening during legal shoot hours, or you got to get up early in the morning and get there before their pig, the pigs are even moving yet and be ready for them. Um, they may not be there residentially all the time. Sometimes during this creek, year round, I mean, you might find a herd here and there, but usually this is one of the better areas. 13 and 13 West, they've got guzzlers in there. They've got wallows in there. Those are very good areas. But once again, you're looking at, you're having to deal with walk-in, no rifles. So something you got to think about, consider is you got to get proficient with, you know, either shotgun or muzzle loader and be able to hike in a little bit or bike in. 29, they bike in quite a bit. So that's that's the forecast map that you see this weekend. It's the 13th, 14th, and 15th. 
three day weekend, holiday weekend, they've opened it up for three days. Typically during Thanksgiving, any holiday, a lot of times they open it for the three day weekend. Sometimes it'll be open more, more than that, depending on the holiday. Um, so that's that map. If you wanted to go to hunt area maps and like, hey, I wanted to know about training area. Let's see here. So here's training area 29. There's the reservoir, there's the lake. If it ever fills up, you're gonna see this is gonna be really good. The lake unfortunately is low right now. Um, it gives you an overview of all the different areas here. Then you can go into training area one and it tells you these are good maps. They give you roads, they show you creeks on here. They'll show you quite a bit of information on here of where these areas are at and how to access them. You can see Liggett, bordered by Los Padres National Forest on either side. That's a lot of public land that hunt, holds pigs that you can go hunt. And some of these will even show you, I don't think we're gonna find one, but they'll show you water crossings. Some of these will even show you, oh yeah, there's a water, surface water wetland. There's guzzlers. On some of these, they'll show you guzzlers. There's also maps you can just Google online for 400 legged topo, things like that. That'll be a little better, more in depth, but they have that there. In the that, yes. Those, those properties that are part of the property that border the Forest Service do, can you go in and out through those or? Yeah, so Hunter Liggett is fenced all the way through and all the way around. It sounds like it's a lot, but it is actually fenced all the way around. If you were to, let's say, be registered in this hunt area one, and you saw pigs over here on the Los Padres National Forest, you could shoot them and vice versa. If you were hunting the forest over here and you were registered in training area one at the same time, you could shoot them in here. So yeah, you could go back and forth. You might have to cross the fence or cross you know, an area over here but you could technically do that if you were registered at Hunter Liggett and you wanted to go back and forth. Um, you have to make sure the forest is open. Like I'm saying, give me the forewarning right now, the Dolan fire, most of those Padres National Forest in Monterey County is closed, um, but you could do that um, typically in the normal year. I contact people all the time that hunt the borders in here and we'll go back and forth. So that's completely doable. Um, let's see, things of interest. So we're gonna go to a photo gallery here. Let's see how fresh some of these are now. Uh, so it's not loading yet quick here. So there's one from December 2020. I don't know what happened to that picture, but it's gone. Here's another one from December 2020. And like they said, this is public land. These are pigs. That looks like a trophy pig right there with those tusks. So these guys are putting in the time and the effort. Um, there are elk hunts out there at Liggett too. I'm not going to go into that. Um, lots of turkey, very high success rate for turkey out there and deer, um, some good deer there. They have pigs, they have bass lakes. There's another pig right there from April of last year. And these are just the people that have decided to submit a picture. But, I mean, you can see that is the, what you're looking for on a lot of these trophy hunters. When you go with a guide, a lot of times you're looking for that Russian boar, that razor back, that black hair. You can see the teeth right there in the tusks. This is all public land. So, and that's a big hog right there. So just things to look at. There's another one from 2019 that was shot out there. And you kind of see these areas are pretty low lying. They're not really hard to hunt necessarily. If you want to be really successful, you can go up in the hills, but these are awesome. There's another pig right there. This guy's first pig looks like he's actually using a muzzle loader. You can see right there on his gun, he's actually using a muzzle loader. And just because they're weapons restricted areas doesn't mean you have to, you don't, you can't use a scope. You can still use a scope. You're not on a, a weapons restricted tag. So anyways, there's some, uh, there's some pictures to show you that they do exist. This mythical unicorn. Oh, look at this guy. He got the twofer. He got a pig and the elk. That's pretty hard. Usually I tell people not to do that because you draw an elk tag, you want to do that first. You don't want to go after a pig. Let's see if that first one came up yet. It didn't come up yet. But anyways, so Liggett has, I would say, is a very good area to go to. Um, they have, you know, iSportsman is what it's called for the check-in and check-out. They have a frequently asked question page. You know, if you have any other questions to go about here, like I said, we could do a whole webinar about Liggett, but I'm not going to, I just some want to touch on, I'm putting so much effort into it and letting you guys know about it because I really think this is one of the better areas you're going to have success at if you wanted to come hunt pigs on public land. Uh, back to the PowerPoint. Bureau of Land Management. So we have BLM land that you can also go hunt uh, that has pigs and will contain pigs. Williams Hill is in Lockwood. 
occasionally has pigs transiting through from private property. It's very steep and dense, uh, has watering guzzlers on it. Pigs are not consistently on this land. Usually these pigs are transiting from private property to private property, from barley field to barley field. Time to time, you will see rooting up there. I have seen people get pigs up there. It's near Hunter Liggett. So if you wanted to go up there and just want to drive and check the area out, you very well could. Um, that's something out there. This next one, Stockdale Mountain and Park Field. So it is surrounded by private land. You need to research this area well before entering. This is one of those areas you're going to want a map or Onyx maps or Onyx hunt, something like that nature. This is the, you will see pigs almost, I guarantee you, 90% of the time when you drive into Stockdale Mountain, you're going to see pigs on the private land. That landowner and those landowners out there watch their property very well. It is fenced. It is signed. There is no way about it. You're going to know that it's private property. Um, you have to drive all the way to the dead end. There's a sign that says Stockdale Mountain, and there's about two trails that lead out of it. And you've got to hike on those trails. And you've got to hike deep in there to have a better chance of pigs. A lot of times the pigs will be coming off the private property onto Stockdale Mountain. Sometimes you're going to have to break brush to get into it or find some game trails. But the deeper you go by at least a mile, if not more, is where you're going to have your chance of getting pigs. So one thing I just want to forewarn everybody, if you do go out there, be very cautious of where you're at. Um, I can't stress that enough. Make sure you do not get tempted at the pigs on the private property that you're going to see because they are there. But do not just be very cautious when you're out there at, San at Stockdale Mountain. Uh, we're going to go to San Benito County. You saw San Benito County earlier was one of those that was a very high success rate for pigs being taken. Uh, we have Laguna Mountain and Sweetwater off of Highway 25. They have campground and you can stay at. They're primitive campgrounds. Pigs are taken throughout the year. It's very dense vegetation. Hunters have shot pigs there and lost them um, due to ve dense vegetation. And by I mean lost them, they've, they've shot them and they've taken them all day to find them. They've, because they roll down in the, a goalie, they'll be in the dense vegetation where they'll shoot them at, you know, 300 yards and have to walk down the hill, up the hill to find them. I would forewarn you, if you're going to make those long shots at Laguna Mountain or anywhere in this dense vegetation, make sure you have a scout or somebody there to help you uh, keep an eye on where that pig went down at, because it's, you can get turned around very easily. People who put in consistent time tend to do well. Um, once again, it goes back to, if you're going to hunt public land, you need to put in the time and effort to find out and pattern these pigs and start asking people where are they at and stuff like that. These are all walk-in areas. You cannot drive in. You cannot bike in. They're going to be on foot. Uh, I would say Laguna Mountain and Sweetwater out that way, not a bad spot to go to. Uh, we can go to Clear Creek and Condon Peak. Um, there are specific BLM permits that are required. It's a large area of 63,000 acres. You can drive on and you can walk in. A very dry area. Pigs have come off this property. Not a lot of pigs, not in great numbers. Um, it's something I throw out there because it's close by to Laguna Mountain. So you could go out there and check it out, go on a drive. You might get lucky. It's not something that it's going to be consistently throwing pigs out like Hunter Liggett or some of these other areas. You also have in Fresno County, Kalinga Mineral Springs off of Highway 198. If you decided to go out towards Stockdale Mountain and you're going back to the valley, you could stop by Kalinga Mineral Springs or same with Laguna Mountain. Um, it's a hike-in only area, very low success rate for pigs. I'm telling you right now, very low success rate. It's just one of those things to throw on there because you're already in the area. If it does have pigs from time to time, it might be worth a shot just to stop and do a quick little hike. Uh, California Fish and Wildlife Areas. All right, so there's going to be another little one here that's going to kind of throw some people off. In Monterey County, we have the Upper Big Sandy Wildlife Area, also known as the San Antonio Unit. This is landlocked fish and wildlife property. You can only access it from private property with permission, Camp Roberts with permission, or the Bradley Bridge and Highway 101. You must research this area prior to going in to the private property. This is another one you need Onyx Maps. You're going to want to probably call the local office um, to talk to somebody that's hunted this before that can tell you how to legally access it a little better. Um, you cannot just, you can drop off on the Highway 101. People will get dropped off on Highway 101. Um, and then I say emphasis dropped off. You leave your car there, CHP can ticket it or tow it if it's not parked in the correct area. So definitely has pigs there. I will tell you that. It's got a river that runs right through it. 
uh, it's just very hard to access. And that's part of it because it's landlocked. So it's a little hard to get to. Uh, Merced County, we're gonna go up a little bit to Merced County. I know somebody had a question earlier about upper and lower Cottonwood Creek areas. These are seasonal areas, so they are not open year round. They typically open with archery deer and close at the end of January. And when they're open for archery deer, they're archery only. Um, upper is a general weapons area when it is open for general weapons deer. Lower is always weapons restricted, archery and shotgun. Uh, if you walk to the back, you'll likely find pig sign. And when I walk to the back, we'll show you here in a bit. The pig populations have been on the rise in this area. One of the guys asked if most of those pigs in Merced County are coming off of this area. And I would say for public land, this is most likely where they're coming off of. Uh, the pigs have been going up. I've talked to some officers there recently and they've said they've seen pigs in the areas that were open. Um, it closed in January, but when it was open, there was pigs out there that they were seeing. So something to think about, consider if you're in that area of Central California in the Valley. Here's the map for it. And you'll get this link at the end as well. Um, so the upper unit, you would have to walk back a little bit further in this area. Here's your parking area, your parking area. Um, it's Oak Woodlands, rolling hills. So not horrible, it can be steep. You can scout and glass a long ways a lot of times. This lower unit is what I've uh, been told recently. I haven't been up there um, the last year, but the lower unit is where the pigs are coming out from right now. I guess uh, one of the things I was told is look at Google Earth and look at the water sources. There's some good water sources back here, some little creeks and some little holding ponds. And that's where you're gonna wanna get into is in this lower unit and hike in. Matt, this was my district, so I could tell you. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, the lower lower cottonwood is good because a lot of pigs go back and forth with the into the state property, the uh, state parks. So there is some creeks back there with some uh, um, guzzlers along this creek area. You'll see them on Google Maps. And then in the upper cottonwood, a lot of them are back in the upper left hand corner uh, near the county line. That area's got heavy uh, um, oak you know, a lot of good oak trees in there. And Dinosaur Point used to have a lot of pigs. Uh, they used to come off Pacheco State Park. If you cruise that Dinosaur Point Road, you'll see crossings. You'll notice trails where they come off the state park and go into uh, Dinosaur Point, St. Louis Reservoir Wildlife Area. You'll see hair on fence. You'll see just matted down trails. So that's what you wanna look for. Yeah, so this is probably where I would say in Merced County, a lot of them are coming off of. It's good public hunting area, um, good opportunity here. If you're gonna go up somewhere. Uh, we're gonna go to San Luis Obispo County. We're gonna move a little further south and we're gonna stay with fish and wildlife areas though. Uh, the Big Sandy, it's the lower unit of the Big Sandy. Uh, it's a walk-in only area in San Miguel, no rifles. You have the Salinas River that runs right through the wildlife area and it's surrounded by private ranches with planted fields. I think one side plants barley, one side plants alfalfa. Um, pigs often cross through the wildlife area and will root the area up as well. Um, pigs have come out of the wildlife area in the last year. I know uh, I've seen some of the pigs come out of there. I've talked to some of the people that have gotten pigs out of there. One of my officers works there consistently and has contacted successful pig hunters. So there are pigs in there. It's just no rifles and you gotta hike in there a little bit, but it's a decent area, not bad. You have a river that runs through it. Once again, water kind of dependent. So something to consider there. San Luis Obispo County continued. You have the Chimeneas Ranch, the south unit. Typically no pigs. So walk-in only area, you need a special permit to get in there. You've got to get a, a access pass, which you can get right there in the parking lot typically but it's very little to no success. It's usually open on Wednesdays and Saturdays um, in September, October, November, December, and January. Uh, make sure you go on there and research the exact laws before you go in. But one thing I wanna to touch on is the North Unit. The North Unit has two special draws um, annually for drive on and you can hunt pigs and there's pigs at the North End Unit. Very few people put in for these hunts, and usually they come out as pig hunt, as come out as a, a dove hunt, or they'll come out as a quail hunt. And if you look at it, a lot of times you're allowed to hunt everything. You read the fine print, it says, Yeah, you can hunt pigs. And I know pigs came out of there this year because I talked to the biologist, and then I went on one of these hunts and they saw pigs. 
Um, so these special hunts are allowed for the take of wild pigs and they typically have good success if you're looking for wild pigs. If that's what you wanted to do, you could have good success and it's for the north unit. And those special draw hunts are usually like I think September and December. Um, then there's an American unit. Uh, it's a walk-in only area that's open year round. This area has water sources such as guzzlers and springs. We put guzzlers in there. Pigs can be taken year round in this area for those that are willing to hike in and scout the areas. You hike up in some areas, glass the guzzlers, glass, glass the watering sources, kind of see where the game trails are coming in and out of, and then try to get on those game trails and follow them out. So that's a decent area to go to. Um, Bureau of Land Management is much of what California Valley is out there, um, the Carissa Plains. It surrounds much of the American unit and the Chimneys Ranch. Some of the Chimneys Ranch even encompasses BLM land. Um, Pigs can be found seasonally during the wetter months off of Sprague Hill Road and the Sprague Hill Road area. Um, the BLM area is kind of like the desert. It's very hot, little rain, cold in the winter months, but there will be rooting up there from time to time off Sprague Hill Road. So something to consider if you're gonna go out there and hike in, one of the areas I would think about. Um, let's see here what we can come up with on this one. And this is another link, pretty much talks about uh, you can get to it off of Highway 166 out of Santa Maria if you're coming from the south towards Santa Barbara County. This is all the area out here that you're looking at the south end where you can hike in. I mean to really get into pigs you've got to hike quite a ways um, and there's typically not very much success for the, that hike in area. There's the American unit here in the north area on that special draw. 39,000 acres about um, when it's all together. They have a uh, you can't access the north unless you have a huge special hunt. The south off 166 um, has special regulations and it tells you right here what, when it's open Wednesdays and Saturdays in these months. Right now it's closed unfortunately um, but I would say it's definitely something to think about. A lot of these hunts when you're putting in for them, nobody else hunts them so no one else is out there hunting the pigs. Our department doesn't allow anybody else out there to go hunt pigs or hunt anything else unless it's a drawn hunt so it's not like they're, uh, it's kind of like they're almost like a preserve at times. Uh, let's keep going here. Camp Roberts. So this is like the sister base to Hunter Liggett. It's a National Guard base, approximately 42,000 acres in Bradley, California, located off the Highway 1. Hunt program has run similar to Fort Hunter Liggett. Not quite as streamlined, not quite up, uh, up to date. And you'll see that here in a little bit. Um, the hunting is limited and not year round. Sometimes the hunts are late notice or species specific. So where I said Liggett, you can almost hunt every weekend. Um, Camp Roberts is not that at all. You can maybe hunt it a few, week, a few weekends out of the year. And then some of the hunts are only species specific. So example for like turkey, spring turkey, it'll only be open for spring turkey. The take of pigs is not authorized. So be mindful when you're out there, if you decide to go out to Camp Roberts, um, their cost is 125 bucks. So same as Hunter Liggett, you must make an appointment there to register your firearms, become vetted for access. So unlike Hunter Liggett that are typically open on a limited basis, not weekly, um, pigs are consistently being taken. So I saw that list earlier that said only six pigs were taken out of military lands in San Luis County last year or a couple years ago. Yeah, that's not, I don't think that's very accurate because I know more than six pigs that have come off of Camp Roberts. So that's just the six pigs that have probably been reported, unfortunately. So it is a very uh, pig heavy area. They have pig issues more so than any other base um, besides Vandenberg. And they like to provide hunting opportunities for the public to help curtail the damage. That way they don't have to get their, uh, their depredation permits for the for the pigs necessarily. Uh, something to consider too is the real ID on Fort Hunter Liggett and Camp Roberts. If you're gonna join in these hunts, you're gonna need a passport or real ID eventually here. Um, the California IDs that say limits apply, federal limits apply will not be accepted. So something to think about. So this is their web page. You'll get the web link for this one. Um, talks about some of the their hunting program. Upcoming pig hunt. They have a pig hunt 27th to 28th. Click on that, it'll tell you all about it. It's gonna tell you which, who is open, who it's eligible for. It's two days, registration, administrative requirements, where it's at, when the gates open, when you can start shooting. Um, the only game approved, like I said, this one is gonna be wild pigs, so you can't go out there and shoot jackrabbits, can't shoot anything else. Um, 
same thing, they follow our regulations. So if you're gonna go out there, you need to make sure that you have a hunting license, a pig tag and all that stuff. And let's just get your head back. I'll go back this way. So they have their own environmental department as well, where they go, they have biologists that help manage all these animals. They have elk out there. Here's some of their pictures that they've had from their pigs you know, over the years. They haven't updated as much as Liggett, but you can see these are public land pigs and they're big pigs, they're nice pigs. So they're out there, there's pigs. They're not as mythical as a unicorn. So something to consider is Camp Roberts. Like I said, just not as open as much as Hunter Liggett, but if you get out there, the opportunities to take pig are probably sometimes better than Liggett because they're not hunted as much and there's not as many people that go in there. So something to consider there. Then we're just kind of touch on some more in uh, San Luis Obispo County and Santa Barbara County here. So Los Padres National Forest in San Luis Obispo County, um, the Pozo area will occasionally have pigs, not a super high success area, is very water dependent. Make sure there's water there, kind of the rainy season's better. Um, typically this time of year is going to be your best time to hunt pigs. Uh, Red Hill Road area off of Highway 58 will also have pigs. Again, is likely weather and water dependent. There are some water sources out there. There's a couple of ponds um, and there's also nearby farms at both Pozo and Red Hill Road that do plant um, some type of forage mix or something like that. So that's why the pigs are out there. There's also vineyards. So a lot of these pigs are healthy coming off of there. And then like when right now when there's nothing on the vineyards, they're out foraging for those acorns or whatever else that's fallen. Uh, Vandenberg Air Force Base, something else to consider. It's another military base. They have lots of pig problems. Uh, they have a pig, um, they have a very good pig take opportunity. That's where most of the pigs come off of Santa Barbara County is in Vandenberg. If you notice Vandenberg, uh, Santa Barbara County didn't have a high six, uh, well, they were one of the top five or anything like that. But the, there's an opportunity here though, if you were to get on Vandenberg to have good success. Um, it's more restrictive though than Camp Roberts and Hunter League. Not necessarily open to the general public, you're going to have to go out there and try to research that one a little more. Usually it's open to active duty military, retired military, first responders, um, and they're a lot more restrictive. They're not open as much. They do have special hunts out there for deer and other, other uh, game, but for pigs, it's usually one of the better areas to also go out there for pigs if you can get on, but it's typically not open to the general public. So that's why I'm not touching on it too much. And that pretty much is going to bring us to an end here. So was there any follow-up questions or questions that needed to be answered I couldn't get to? Any firearm restrictions in Camp Roberts? Uh, not necessarily. Um, they will have their same thing. Usually once they're open for general weapons, they're open for general weapons. Not as, uh, as much as Liggett. No, you know, we, uh, we a lot of them as they came in, Matt. So uh, we did a good job. I, uh, everybody, a lot of people are still with us, so. Yeah, it's a, look at some here. Yes, a lot of these are open for fishing. Camp Robert's not open for fishing. Hunter League it is if you get a permit for it. Um, so something to think about there. They have really good fishing when it is there. I'm looking on the uh, questions here. If there's anything else. Somebody that, was asking yeah. about uh, camp camping in the field, like backpack camping on Liggett. So no, there is no overnight camping. That's what you got to be out. I think two hours. You're allowed in the training areas two hours before. Um, legal shoot time, which is, you know, I think they allow you two hours before sunrise and two hours after sunrise or sunset, you have to be out of there. So they do not allow um, camping, backpack camping, overnight camping in the training areas. A lot of times if you get something off of a, if you get something that's a, a pig that's way out there, it's the end of the night, you can call the game check, you can call their PD, their, their police officers, and they have their own game wardens on their base and they will come out there and help you open the gate or try to help you get it out of there. So they're pretty good about that. Or you can contact me and I'll try to get somebody out there. So guzzlers, guzzlers are water sources. A lot of these places that have environment, like our department, Hunter League at Camp Roberts have their own environmental uh, departments and they put out guzzlers for animals. That's pretty much what they're trying to do is keep water sources for animals out there. Um, Onyx on the base units called. I don't know if there's Onyx, I don't believe has the training areas for Hunter Liggett, unfortunately. If you really were interested in Hunter Liggett, I would get a Venza maps and then download the Fort Hunter Liggett topo map. It follows you offline, don't need cell phone service and tells you what area you're in at all times. So that's a little insider trick. 
and know where you're at. All right. All right. Well, I think we're going to wrap it up there. Um, Matt, we have uh, um, some things going out uh, in the links. Uh, some people are asking about PowerPoint, so I'll get with you on that if we want to somehow make that available somewhere. We might make it available on our Advanced Hunter Ed page, but mm -hmm. they will have the recording. So um, I am going to try to get that posted on my Advanced Hunter Education page as soon as possible. So uh, stand by. I would like to get it possibly hopefully tomorrow, but uh, we'll see how that works. All right. Well, thank you guys for all sticking with it. Hope you guys learned something. Like I said, my email address is right there if you want to shoot me emails or have any questions or follow up. All right. Thanks, Matt. I also want to thank all of our panelists who are helping me answer all the questions tonight. You guys did a great job answering uh, over 100 questions that came in. I appreciate that. Um, but for now, I want to just say good night and uh, look forward to um, what we're going to have in March. We're going to concentrate on some turkeys. So gobble, gobble, we're going to get ready for that. And uh, good night. Thank you for everybody coming on.